All right, and welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trade. Today is Wednesday, February 15, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, let's get into the market here today. Doing the video a little bit on the early side. Um, it is a whipsaw Wednesday, and you can see we had a lot of, a lot of chop uh, early on, and right now. I'm not expecting too many fireworks here before the close. Um, we could float up here. Um, the reason I say that is take a look at the volume on the spiders. Very, very light here. Um, so kind of a light volume gap down. Lots of whipsaw, lots of premium collection. Um, I kind of stepped away from the markets um, earlier this morning when I saw this whipsaw. And, um, you know, basically it's been quiet ever since then. We have, you know, had a nice float up though for what it's worth. Um, triple Q's here up half a percent. Spiders are flat. Um, and the Russell after a gap down is up 1%. So Russell hanging in there nicely. Um, it's basically hammering right back on this uh, this trend line here. This will probably, let's get rid of these lines now. This will probably get back up uh, to 195. I think we talked about that yesterday. So that would be that red bar high there. That should get up into that range um, at least tomorrow here. I mean, it's very close already. There's also a gap up there at 197. Um, a few things I noticed a little bit about today, um, outside of how quiet it was, notice there was no put buyers on the gap down. Um, so like the last couple of days, especially yesterday, um, we had that big flush in the morning on the gap down and you're kind of seeing that like almost like panic rush to volatility. Um, everybody eager, eager to jump in on short and kind of short FOMO. We didn't see that today. Um, so we saw some whipsaw after the close. I mean, they did test the lows, but to me, that was just premium draining. Um, so you're starting to see shorts get a little scared here, potentially. Um, and you're seeing every dip being bought. So um, that's kind of what we need to see here if we're going to get a market turn. Uh, but just a little bit of a, um, you know, just a little bit of a change there, potentially. Now, tomorrow, we have to talk about a few things. So we're flagging nicely here. Again, as we've kind of mentioned, uh, obviously everybody can see it there. Um, the four hour looks pretty good too. So you have a nice little inside bar there on the four hour. Um, everything looks fine for a possible move up here and we are coiled up enough. Tomorrow, or I should say it really today, Vixpiration is in play. And the day after, really all last year, the day after Vixpiration, we've had 100 point moves almost every time. Um, like, I think it's like, I said this yesterday, but I think it's like nine or 10 out of the 12 ones that we had. Um, we had like, you know, a 90 or a hundred point move to either way. Usually they were down last year, but, um, either way, could we get that tomorrow? Um, it's possible. And some intriguing things here. We're at 413. Where's the gap that we've all been looking at, right? 422. That's 90 points. So that's nine spy points. So that could get up there. I just don't know what the catalyst would be. I mean, we have PPI tomorrow. We have um, we have some jobs numbers, but PPI is always PPI is like notoriously a nothing burger. So I can't really see the one thing I could see is maybe here is just a theory. Maybe the labor market finally cracks. That's how you get the market to be up a hundred points. So we do have uh, continuing claims and uh, initial claims. If I'm not mistaken, I'm just going to double check that. Yep, so core PPI, initial claims, continuing claims, Philadelphia Fed Index, that doesn't really matter, housing starts, uh, but the bigger ones will be the jobs number. It's not non-farm payrolls, but it is, you know, jobless claims. So, um, again, are these, you know, is it NFP? No, um, you know, but that would be a possible thing um, that could happen. And we talked about this. We need to see a little bit more complacency if we're going to get a market turn. The VIX is coming down pretty sharply here. And we are still into the risk zone um, cyclically. But again, um, we might need to push up one more time here. And the charts look fine. So there's nothing to say that they can't do that. Uh, maybe the VIX needs to make a new nominal low. That's certainly possible here. Uh, but we're starting to see signs that the you know we're not seeing those put buyers jump in like they were even last week um, or even just yesterday. They did kind of just back off here. So we're starting to see a little bit of fear from shorts. Um, again, like I said, which is what you need here. Um, anyways, all right, a couple of things. Um, all right, let's look at the triple Q's here. So again, spiders hanging in there, okay. But the triple Q's, and I, I tweeted about this earlier, and they're hanging in there, okay. Trying to get above this kind of daily chart trend line here. 
if we can get that in, there we go. So trying to break above that right now, we'll see if that can, you know, basically if we close right here, that would be a breakout and we would need to confirm it tomorrow. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of resistance up here at this gap here in 320, if we were to push up into that area. But overall, the big story here, and I tweeted about this earlier, is yields. And you guys know I'm going to mention this. Um, the two-year lower again today. It's recovered a little bit off the lows here. We talked about that 7.5 retrace, which is right here. So it's, you know, it pierced through that and it's held for now. You have, you're basically holding that green bar low. We tested that today and we got a little bit of, you know, basically a dead cap bounce, but yields are in trouble here. And the ZB, I thought this would bear flag, but this has already lost its 100 day moving average. Um, so you'll have a pivot down here and you are into a little bit of support right there, but this is not a good look. I thought it would at least have to bear flag first before pushing lower. Um, but yields are a problem here. And why, why is this a problem, Aaron? Why do you keep mentioning yields? Let's look at, I'm just gonna use TLT and we'll throw on a little study here. So I'll just throw the NASDAQ 100 on. So that's the QQQ, um, but this, this is where it has to go. So um, the Qs are positively correlated to bonds. Why? This is just how our financial system works. <laughs> it's, um, you know, they use cheap debt to grow their balance sheet effectively. So. Um, this has to be in line with the TLT. The stock market is the stupid one. The bond market's the smart one. Um, every time the Qs get out of line and TLT is diverging, Jaws got to close shut. Um, and that happened last year. I pointed this out last August um, and last March. So take a look here. So TLT was going down. Qs were going up. Jaws closed shut. Um, August, Qs going up. TLT down. Jaws closed shut. What are we doing now? TLT is fading and the cues are pushing up so and even worse is the two-year uh, the two-year is really pushing down and that's really the inflation barometer that's the one that tells the fed if they need to continue raising rates well is this going down or is it going up it's going down obviously this is a major breakdown of covering this every single day on here so in any case um cues are on borrowed time but can't rule out one more type of push up here again markets in good technical shape right now as far as um, the daily chart is concerned so we can't rule out a little bit more upside and again i do think we need to see a little bit more complacency for, before this market does turn um, so let's get over here so we mentioned the russell already dow again a nothing burger again target has not changed there uh 345 maybe a pierce of that on the daily chart and that should be about it for the dow jones industrials under the semiconductors those were a little bit lower today down half a percent here um, nvidia which basically is the smh now was down 1.3%. And the TSM, so Taiwan Semi, is down over 5.5%. Uh, I believe Berkshire dumped a huge position in TSM, so heavy volume there selling. Lost that 20 moving average, but it's still holding these pivots, so nothing terrible here on TSM, but definitely a little bit of a concern there uh, for the semis. Um, if that continues, that could be a little bit of a topping signal here. You definitely want the semis to be leading, not lagging. Overall, um, they're down half percent. And they're still inside of, you know, that kind of range, that little trend line there uh, versus the triple Qs, which are above that. So a little bit of laggard ship there for one day. It's not a big deal, but if that continues, it's a major problem for tech and for the market. Uh, IGV, this is green, so up 61 basis points. That's hanging in there okay. I think Roku has earnings after the bell. And I want to say uh, Trade Desk. Yeah, Trade Desk had earnings. Um, power move there for trade desk up almost 30 percent what a what a banger there look at the volume there 25 million shares right into these pivots though um, that is a power gap though maybe this can get up there and fill that gap um, but a lot of bags up in this area here but nice move on trade desk we'll see what roku does after the bell here that is up 11 percent as well but igv again we're still looking at that gap up there we talked about that yesterday and the day before 303 303 um and that would, for what it's worth, be one more nominal high there for cloud software. Uh, transports here, a gap down just like everything else, and then getting a little bit of a bid off of that. Still up just 16 basis points, very light volume here. Um, again, I do think this wants to go test 15.50, maybe even a pierce of that, maybe 15.8, um, maybe even just retest that uh, green bar low again, that old green bar. Um, but again, they're hanging in there for now, so we'll respect it for the time being. 
Uh, all right, over to uh, housing here. So XHB, again, slightly higher high from yesterday. We're up 60 basis points, nothing crazy here. I don't see a ton more upside in here. If these do make a new high, it'll be nominal. Same thing with ITB there. And VNQ continues to be a laggard here. It's basically flat today um, and still just unable to get out of its own way. So you still have lower highs here on the daily, potentially a, a, a higher low, slightly higher low. But this is not a great pattern here um, when you compare it to the rest of the market, which has been, you know, for the most part, rallying. All right, over to financials. XLF still stuck in this rising wedge here. Um, they had a nice gap down this morning. I'm taking a look at some of my fin stocks I got on here. Yeah, not really the greatest move off the low. So this is negative in an up market too. Um, again, the volume's light, could be OPEX related. And that's that's one more thing too, uh, before I forget. With the spiders, it is OPEX this week. Um, you know, expect some games. That's part of the reason why I took the morning off this morning, just because as soon as I saw the open, I just did not like it. Um, I knew there would be a lot of whipsaw. And notice how we get up here, like we're going to break out and then we just fade. This is OPEX type stuff here. Um, but I, either way, um, XLF under a little bit of pressure here. And it's been lagging. It hasn't, you know, it's barely made new highs here up to 12.1. We just made a new nominal high. Never really, when we closed above it one time. And um, that's obviously a laggard here moving forward. So banks still not doing that good. I do like Morgan Stanley if you guys are looking for a short here. Um, right above 102. So we have a nice rising wedge here on the daily. And it looks poised to make one little, one more pop here. Um, again, that is that outlier candle from that technical error day. Um, but look what you're going into here. Tons of resistance here. This is a major failed bear, uh, bull flag on the weekly. Um, and that took, let's see, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven months. So there's seven months of buyers trapped up here. Um, and we're basically into that area right now with a rising wedge. So I like that up there on MS. But for right now, it's holding up. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. JP Morgan, I still am looking for that to get just above 145, 145.50 perhaps. And that's about it for JPM. So again, financials still laggard here and uh, nothing really saying that that's going to change anytime soon except for XBD. XBD is still holding up well. Nothing really too new to add there. On to crude. Everybody was talking about crude today. We had an inventory number um, that did get a nice bid off the lows. And daily chart right now is holding up okay. Up move. And you do have a kind of tiny micro little inside bar here. And we tested the lows of that the last two days in a row. And we've come up off of that. And now on an intraday basis, you know, hanging in there okay. Um, again, <laughs> I'm saying this every single day, but neutral until proven otherwise, 82.72 on a weekly close. Um, that's really all you need to know there for crude. But for right now, it's, you know, got a decent pop off the lows. If it can consolidate more, you could pop, possibly push higher. If that does, um, I think that'll be a problem for the market. Um, anyways, over to XLE. XLE was lower pretty nicely today. It look, looks like it's trying to hold that green bar there. So 88.17, it's right on that right now. We'll see if it closes above that. It's hanging in there okay. You got a decent little bullish pattern here intraday, although it's inside of this big red par. So we'll see what it does here. Um, that would be a slight negative for XLE to close below that. But remember, it is OPEX week, so lots of game playing going on here. XOP is still inside of its respective green bar, so that looks okay. And OIH also looks okay as well. I'm still giving this one the upside bias to about 350. Um, Nat gas looks like some more liquidations coming in here. Take a look right before the COMEX close. Just stumped right out there and i think i talked about this the other day or perhaps last week a lot of people are trying to buy this dip down here i shouldn't say dip but a lot of people are trying to buy down here and it reminds me very much of the tesla trade where you had that major sell-off and then we started to put in a low and then we kind of rolled over a little bit and then the lows came in so we might see one more dip here in that gas to push out any of those uh, potential bottom pickers so um, either way, that came under pressure here before the comics goes. So maybe just some more liquidations going on there. Anyways, dollar index. Here's another elephant in the room. That's a breakout on the dollar, DXY there. Um, we'll still be waiting for confirmation tomorrow, but I love this pattern here. Popped above the 50 MA. Nice consolidation. Now you're going to go up into this red bar. So maybe about 105. If this confirms, you know, this will have resistance at 105. But that's a nice pattern there for the DXY on the weekly. 
You can see those moving averages coming into play there, the 50 MA just above 105, the 20 down sloping at 106 there. And then obviously, you know, you're going into this little breakdown area. So that would be a resistance there. R markets right now are ignoring the dollar. Um, two theories behind that. One, it's OPEX week. I've seen this happen many times before where correlations break down during options X. So this is totally normal. The other thing is kind of like what I was saying earlier, the stock market is stupid and bond market is smart um, and the currency markets are smarter. So you're seeing kind of stock market ignore these things here. Um, there's too many shorts in the market. They need to be squeezed out. That's that's certainly a theory, um, but it also could just be OPEX stuff. But the dollar is on breakout there. So we'll watch that for tomorrow for confirmation. Uh, gold here. So a pretty weak showing here for gold. I want to take a look at the GLD. I had a level, yeah, about one one sixty nine fifty. So this pivot here and this pivot high. So yeah, one sixty nine eighty, one sixty nine fifty, is a good level for GLD there. Um, and that's basically you know eighteen thirty, eighteen thirty five on uh, gold futures. I really thought I had a good shot to um, hold that fifty moving average here, at least for a bounce. But the fact that it's not, guess what? It's telling you that it's weak. So um, again, I've been telling you guys, I don't like precious metals. Do not be long up here. If you are, trail your stop. And this is proving to be the right decision right now. Now it is getting into support here. I've been telling you guys 1820 to 1830, we're getting there. Um, slow of the day is 1839. It might have one more dip here into this green bar, into this 1825 level. You see the pivot high, that previous bull flag that will be support. Look at all the moving averages you have coming in here, 20, 150 MA. Um, actually, that's I'm sorry, that's a little bit lower there, um, but that would be kind of a next secondary level. Um, but there's also a fib right into the 382 at 1838, which we basically touched. So there's a lot of support coming into this area here. Um, we'll see what it does tomorrow. Maybe it can bid back up and reverse that, but it's showing it's a little bit weaker here by not even getting a, a bounce and a lower high off of that 50 MA. So a um, little bit of trouble there. In the gold market, silver also on the weaker side. I'm not touching this until 21, but you know, again, this might get a bounce tomorrow. It's got, you know, you're into that green bar. There is a little bit of support here. About 21 is a much better level for a swing trade. Platinum here, continuing to push lower. Now, again, we talked about this falling wedge yesterday. A lot of the time, and I say this all the time, but when you get rising wedges and falling wedges, you usually get a fake break. That could be the case here for platinum. We'll see what it does tomorrow. But if you get back inside of this range, this can squeeze up to, you know, 995, 1,000. So we'll watch that for um, on PL there. But that is into some good support as well with the falling wedge there. Green bar, that's your breakout bar, pivots. So we'll see what it does tomorrow. But um, yeah, platinum down two and a quarter percent. Uh, copper here, again, still flagging. So bear flag above the 50 MA. This is setting up for a move lower next stop is 390. All right, lastly, let's get over to Bitcoin. Um, and there's the yield curves as well. So you can see three month tenure. Um, twos and tens hit a new low yesterday, by the way. Um, but Bitcoin here, nice pop. So maybe this is a leading indicator. So we've been, Bitcoin's kind of been a little bit of a leading indicator lately. Um, but that's getting a bid here. And it's basically moving up to, I mean, it's going to want to go test 24.2 now at this point. Um, but we've been saying 25,000, maybe a pierce of 25 for a while. That kind of got negated with this, I shouldn't say negated. We just said the bullish structure is worse. And the longer it consolidates above this, the weaker it's going to get. But it had a nice little breakdown here. And there's Ether there as well, touching the 50. Doge, same thing. Doge is much weaker. Uh, but either way, Bitcoin getting a bid here just shy of 24,000 now and you are going to close above that red bar high so looks like this kind of bigger bullish structure is going to win out for bitcoin um, even though it did kind of put in that kind of sloppy rolling top i never liked those um, with those divergent highs but bitcoin getting a squeeze here so maybe this is maybe we do get that 100 point move tomorrow we'll see um, again getting back over to the spiders here i just don't know what the catalyst would be other than like okay the labor market tightens up or uh loosens up i should say with the jobs number, I can't see PPI being it um, because PPI is never really a catalyst. It just isn't. So, um, but either way, um, we'll see. Very interesting times here. And um, markets are holding up well. I do think the next pump, though, is the last one here in this rally. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com. Talk to you all tomorrow.